Good morning and welcome to Morning Java, brought to you as always by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they are still open and they are still serving up the captain. I can't get a fish fry anywhere else right now. That's right, pal. I'm, I'm, You're not I'm making it at home, no. are you? No. Oh, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> this place is not open for business, and that's sadder today than it would be on most days because it's April 2, and it would have been the home opener, it Pirates did. versus Reds. Yeah. It's, it's a shame. You know, it's nice and windy today. I think. Oh, you're, you're going like this. It's all it's, windy. It's, yeah. it's, it's, all you'd have to do, this would be like a Bradenton kind of day. You just put the ball up in the air and just watch it carry out. Yeah. You know, like yeah. airmail. Get the Carl Moran traditional opening day Grand Slam, time honor tradition. Pirates uh, versus Reds. Who would have been your starter? I think, remember, it's the home opener. It is the home opener. I would have had Chris Archer, Archer start the uh, regular season opener in Tampa Bay. Shelton would have, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he was healthy, I don't think it's really... No doubt. Yeah. Uh, and I would have had Musgrove go to game two, so looking at it, that'd be Joe Musgrove on the bump. Right, because they would have gone from St. Petersburg to Chicago to yeah. Wrigley Field for the Cubs opening series and then been back here for what would have been the third series of the season. You know, you and I talked about this when we were down in Bradenton together, and I can't help but wonder about it now as well. Those first six games were going to be really rough. Yeah, they... Uh, the, you know what I mean? The Rays were very quietly, maybe the best team in the American League last year. I'm going to stand by that they lost three games to Houston on the road, which... Right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other team cheated. He won't say yeah. it. I said it. <laughs> and then they kicked their butts whenever they played at home. So yeah. that, that has to count for something. It sure does. I'm not convinced that the Cubs are really that good a team right now. But, but it's the Cubs, but it is at, the Wrigley Cubs Field, at Wrigley Field. Bill yeah. Murray would have been singing the seventh inning stretch, and everybody would have been all fired up he would and have. all that other stuff. He would Hunter was going to get that series. I would have gone for Bill Murray. See, there you go. <laughs> Actually, they sing it right in the booth next to you. See? Whenever I went Next last year, it was yes uh, Nick Offerman and <laughs> Tammy too. The uh, it, it, if, but it it felt like when I looked at that schedule, like the Reds being at home was going to be more of a whew, like let's you know. And I know the Reds went out and spent a zillion dollars. I have absolutely no faith in what another they did. Another team None. I'm not convinced is really no. that good because no. last year they got good because of the pitching. Yeah. So what did they do? They immediately made their defense garbage. They yeah. got Castellanos. They're putting Mike Mustakas at second base with nowhere else for him to go no, it's... he shouldn't be playing second base for no. anybody at any rate this would have been the 134th home opener maybe there will still be one this season now i mentioned 134 openers that means the franchise has been around for a very very long time um, and in that time they've had a really good number of great truly great players yes. iconic players hall of famers uh, 13 Hall of Famers and all uh, that went in, you know, with the Spent Pirates almost their cap. entire career with the Pirates. Who is the greatest of them? Uh, I mean, we're standing next to someone who should be in the conversation. I, I have some reservations. Uh, Hannes, by the way, in case you didn't know from, you know, the off-screen pointing. Uh, <laughs> I do have some reservations to say that someone who played 100 years ago against pig farmers, you know, was the greatest baseball player to ever come through the organization. I mean, you got Clemente, you got Stargell, your generic picks. I think Barry Bonds should be in the conversation. Maybe not as the greatest, but if you want to just talk about pure talent, I, I maybe. Yeah, he had a heck of an arm, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was a whopping 10 months old whenever that happened. Yeah. I, I remember it well. Yeah, dude had a gun out there. Um, I will say this. In, in no un, no ambiguous terms here, Hannes Wagner is the greatest player, in, in my mind, in the franchise history. Uh, to me, when you do era versus era comparisons, it's always that player's ranking within his own peers. And you're right. The peers at the time, you know, a lot of them were coal miners. A lot of them were workers in the mills. Uh, mostly in the 1800s. By the time you got to the 1900s, they were full-time professional uh, athletes. And they were playing well, first over here at Exposition Park and then by 1909, of course, over at, at Forbes Field. Uh, Hannes Wagner was so much better 
than everyone else in the National League. His only real peer, talent-wise, was Ty Cobb in the American League. Um, the Pirates have not had many players like that, to say the least. Um, you, you can't say that about Clemente, even though he had an MVP. You can't say that about Stargell. He had a co-MVP. Uh, Wagner was by far the best player in the National League for an extended period of time. Uh, to me, that makes him the greatest. I don't care that he played. It was a, what? What does that mean? You know, I mean, are we going to say that a hundred years from now that, that what Clemente did didn't count, or that what Mario no. Lemieux did didn't count, or what Mean Joe Green did didn't count? Okay, I, I mean that's I, I not just, fair. I just finished up Christy Mathewson's book on pitching, and he talked about Hannes Wagner, and he said the strategy back then was to hit the ball on the ground because the infields were garbage and nobody could, you know, yeah, 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 yeah nobody could hit the ball in the air. Except here's this dude who's 50 pounds heavier than everyone else, and he's you know driving the ball because he can hit it up in the air. I, it's like what would happen if Mike Trout played 1980s baseball? You can't do that though. You can't do that. To Mike an extent, Trout, you have to consider you, it, though. You, you know, you really can't, though, because Mike Trout is the product of, of, first of all, multiple generations of humans just becoming bigger and all kinds of additional specific training, nutrition, and everything else, and, and equipment, and you just can't do it, you know? The equipment and the fields and the thing, you, they are what they are. You know, in your era. That's why the only fair comparisons to me, including the really advanced analytics on this, which, by the way, also support me. They, they do support you. On the Hannes you. Wagner argument. That's why I didn't bring that argument up, because, so, it, because you would have beaten me there. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> just, it's, he's, to me, he's the greatest. All right, we tossed around the Reds and the Cubs. Let's swing back to the modern day here. Was there a team in the Central where you, you thought to yourself, now there's somebody that's going to, I don't want to say run away from it, but be a clear favorite? I don't think so. I think the best example. Not St. Louis? St. Louis would be the one that I would think about, but Matt Carpenter isn't what he used to be. No. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt is still a really good player, but I, I don't think he's what he used to be. I, With that rotation, with, with Flaherty leading it, I, I think they have a good group of pitchers. And it could be even better if Nicholas goes back to his 2018 form. Which he's capable of. He's definitely capable of. And Flaherty can be special. Flaherty is low-key a borderline top five pitcher in this league. Right. I, but overall, I don't think that position core is that great. I already ripped apart the Reds for, you know, completely abandoning their pitchers, you know, giving them terrible defense to work with. And I don't think Trevor Bauer is as good as everyone says. I think he just had one really good year and has been a – more or less above average workhorse since then. Um, Cubs, also questions with the pitching. They are a very top heavy team. If Bryant, uh, Baez, or Rizzo go down, that team's done. Yeah, I'll, take the, opinion, I'll take the Brewers. Uh, since Brewers lost their best player, though. Yeah. Or second best player. I mean, they still have Yelich, well, but Grandal. They still have the best player in the National League. Yeah, but they, Yelich, lost, but yeah. they lost Grandal and they replaced him with a bad catcher. Yeah. I mean, it's... You know, the Brewers are going to take a step backward. Most of these teams, I put Brewers, Cubs... You know, Brewers and Cubs is taking a step backward. The Cardinals is just being the Cardinals, which I think is going to be good enough for first place because that's almost always to be spoken in a positive connotation. Uh, the Reds are going to disappoint people who think that they're all of a sudden going to be some 85-90 win team out of nowhere just because yeah. they spent money. doesn't mean they spent it well. Um... And, you know, the Pirates can be, and we didn't even mention them, but within the context of the NL Central, I know everybody's expecting and predicting a disaster. I'm not. If the Pirates were to end up being a third or fourth place team in the division, I wouldn't be stunned by it. I really wouldn't. I think this division is more or it's less not wide great, open. Yeah, it's not a great division. People no. keep forgetting that when they're predicting. When you're predicting... Alex, 105 and all these other crazy... You can't do it. You can't do it, like, but especially best... not in a division that's kind of blah. Yeah, I mean, the division winner very well could win 88 games this year. I think it's probably the weakest division in all of baseball right now because the AL Central has the Twins. Which people aren't used to. Yeah, people and the White Sox, who NL... I think are a breakout team. Mm -hmm. People I... are used to the NL Central being loaded. This wind's going to knock us over here. This would have been a good day for some baseball, except if you were a pitcher. <laughs> Paul Moran would have had two Grand Slams. That's right, two Grand Slams. <laughs>